I can give any advice to anybody going into this is just, just don't give up. Don't let any self or fear, like again, what your experience is, who you are, what you are, that's, 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 you create your own story. It doesn't matter if you didn't, if you lived in a war zone or you worked at a, at a, a corner store. If you believe you are capable, then you are capable and don't let anybody tell you differently. For those who don't know, I'm Brad. I'm the uh, president of training division. And I'm here with the great Kathleen Nora, who was captain of our camp back in May. And uh, we're just going to chat a little bit. So, um, yeah. yeah, so welcome. So I can Thank use- Thank you, little... Brad. Which camp were you in? Which class were you in? Class 295. First, I don't know if you remember this, but the first kind of communication you and I had, you were captain, you were wearing the uh, red helmet. You were in the front <laughs> row. It was a super hot day. <laughs> and I looked you in the eye and I said, yeah, this must be tough because it's really hot. Kind of making yeah. the assumption that being from Canada, sometimes yeah. it's tough for Canadians and, and it is hot. And you look back at me and said, no, this is a breeze. I've spent, you know, decades working for the UN in Africa, <laughs> carrying yeah. a axe and a rifle and everything else. And I was like, yeah, I'll just put my foot right in my mouth. <laughs> I, I should like, know better than to make assumptions about any of our students. No, it's they are amazing and they come from such a variety of backgrounds. So I know now a little more about you, but share a little bit about kind of the last maybe five or six years of your life leading up to choosing to become a firefighter and why you did that. Okay, well, as you mentioned, yeah, I've spent um, most of my adult life overseas working for the United Nations, World Food Program, NATO, um, Africa, the Middle East. And um, yeah, I did two years in Afghanistan. I was in South Sudan, Niger, Somalia, Djibouti, all of the places most people would never want to go for vacation, but for my line of work, it's exactly where I needed to be. Um, and that's pretty much what pushed me into fire was being in these emergency situations. Well, two reasons was one, wanting to do more. We were support and yes, we were evacuating and we were doing um, our, our help and, and whatever mission we were doing. Um, but the ability to be hands-on in these emergencies was not there. And I wanted to be, I wanted to do more. Right. And the second thing was the ability to switch it off. When you're living in a war zone, you leave your house and you're in it. You go to the grocery store and you're in it. Sometimes your house is even in it. Um, 10 years doing this, there was no off button. Whereas at least in fire, there's a bit of an off button. You know, you have your 24 hour shifts, you may be on call, but at least you can go home yeah. and not in it. <laughs> yeah, very good. So you had choosing fire is one thing, choosing training division is a whole nother thing. What, first of all, how did you find out about training division and how did that work, that flexible program to be online and then come to camp, you know, work well for you? It was amazing because it allowed me to work overseas, the, just the, that ability to study and then come for boot camp. But I found it uh, through friends. I have a few friends who are uh, paramedics or um, doing fire as well. And I, I expressed interest and they recommended training division specifically because of my schedule. And I had originally actually went to go be an EMT first okay. and then decided on fire yeah. because it was more aligned with what I wanted to do. That's awesome. Um, but now all of a sudden you're a leader, you're a leader of that battalion. And, and how did that go for you? It was, uh, it was tough to say the least, actually. It was a little tougher than, I have, I have a very composed exterior <laughs> and then the internal emotions, you know, there's always that self-doubt, that, that fear and that anxiety. And um, it, 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 you, you read it all the time, motivational quotes, the only time can you, that you can be strong is when you've been weak. And the only time you can be brave is when you're fearful. So there was a lot of, um, questioning going into firefighting, of course, the fear of failure, um, whether or not I was good enough for the job. Of course, my experience leading up to it would show yes, but until you actually practice and you're in there and you, you, you have no idea. Yeah. Do I have a fear, a sudden fear of a claustrophobia that I don't know until I put that SCBA on? Like, <laughs> I have be, no idea. I can tell you, there's going to be some people that watch this 
and they're going to be at home and they're contemplating becoming a firefighter and they like the idea of the online program so they can keep their jobs and keep working in a two week boot camp. They like that, but they're mm-hmm. going to look at you and go, I'm not that girl. I, I don't have all this experience and I haven't lived in a foreign country in a war zone for months and I'm not that <laughs> strong. I'm not, I work, you know, I work at the Safeway and, and that's all I've ever done. And how am I going to do this if she was nervous or anxious doing it? And, and the first thing I can say is we have people from all kinds of backgrounds and some with zero mm-hmm. experience at all. And the nice part about boot camp is once you're there, you're connected into a family that's going to take care of you and get you through all that. So it doesn't really matter what your background is. Exactly. Uh, you know, you're going to be taken care of. And, and I don't think anyone, everyone's a little nervous. Oh, hundred percent. We had, we have each other's backs. I'm still in touch with a few of them and have plans to check in on at least all of them <laughs> once in a while to see where they're at in their careers, yeah. and if they're doing well, just because you do care about each other. And obviously with time and space, things, communication dwindles, but yeah, yeah, definitely. For those who don't know, boot camp. once you're there, we pick you up from the airport. So there's probably 15 to 20 Canadians wandering around some pillar at the airport looking for where to go. Um, then you're in the vans, then you're off to the camp and you'll roll in and you'll very quickly get to know each other because we do orientation that first Friday night. And then right Saturday, away. you are right <laughs> into hazmat and you are doing theory. And then you're right into gear, equipment, doing all the ladders, hose, and, and ending of course with the live burns and everything that we do. So sometimes people ask the two weeks, does it go by quickly? I would say at the beginning, they think, oh man, this is gonna be a long time. It's a lot of information by Sunday of hazmat. You're like, how am I gonna get through, you know, 12 more days? But by the end, it's gone by super fast and you've made these connections with those people and you've gained your certificates and, and you, you're going back home and you're like, that's it, that it's over already, right? So um, yeah, so it goes pretty quick. Um, how was it living with everybody outside of the training? You had to sleep in the same bunk room with everyone. And we get this question often, well, from everybody, but especially the females, they're like, am I going to stay in the same bunk room with all the guys? And the answer is yes. You know, everyone's yes. clothed and everything else, but you guys have your own restrooms and showers and of course everything else. But how was it staying in a bunk room with 25 or 26 other people? <laughs> I was okay. I mean, there's a symphony of snores and flatulence at night. <laughs> so if you do wake easily, definitely wear headphones or, or um, earplugs or something, but it was, I felt completely comfortable. Again, they're your brothers and sisters and uh, yeah. you, you get used to it real quick. <laughs> okay, well, by Tuesday or Wednesday, you're gonna be so tired that when yeah. those lights go out and you have to be up at 6 a.m., you'll be fine. <laughs> you won't yeah. notice. <laughs> so true. That's awesome. Yeah, that's exactly well, it. What would you say, uh, we don't get at this a lot, but but I had a question this week from someone that said, do we ever have any females in the class? And I kind of chuckle because it's, to me, it seems like an odd question in 2021 to be asking, but it comes from somewhere. So obviously they don't haven't seen it maybe in their fire service or in the people around them. And my answer is, yeah, of course, we have 75 to 80 females a year come through training division. But you know, that's 12 to 15% of our students. And that's pretty normal, which means three, two to three in every class, every boot camp that we do. So it's a smaller group, but it's a tight group. And uh, they're accepted just like anyone else. And they roll with everyone else. And you were the captain of your class. So you had to (laughs) boss guys around. And I think that's awesome. Uh, That is super important. But what would you say to a young woman who's like, I don't even know if I can become a firefighter because I've never seen a woman firefighter in my community. I don't even know that that exists, right? Clearly it does. We're telling them it does. It does. Is it, would you say that makes it more motivating for you or for them? Or is it just everyone's still their own individual and and you encourage them to try it? I definitely encourage them to try it. And, and it definitely is motivating to, to, as a female, you're, you're, that does not prevent you from being just as good as anybody else around you. Now, if you're going to put me with 300, uh, 300 pound person and expect me to haul it up by myself of, out of a building, play to your strengths. I'm small, you know, put me in smaller areas. Um, maybe don't have me lift the heaviest things by myself. Everyone has their own strengths and that's 
as captain to recognize that of your team and as of yourself, recognize your strengths and your weaknesses and playing to those strengths and weaknesses. If I can give any advice to anybody going into this is just, just don't give up. Don't let any self or fear, like again, what your experience is, who you are, what you are, that's, 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 you create your own story. It doesn't matter if you didn't, if you lived in a war zone or you worked at a, at a, a corner store. If you believe you are capable, then you are capable and don't let anybody tell you differently because you can and you will. It's only, just don't give up. <laughs> awesome. Beautiful. Beautiful. Good words for, for all of us. Me too. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Me too. So thank you so much. Thank I you, Brad. It. Bye, awesome. Brad.